All right, fellow Kagglers. You know, we love to uh, tinker around with all this uh, cutting edge data science stuff here. Mm -hmm. And today, yeah. we're diving deep into AI agents. Absolutely. Uh, we've all heard the hype. Yeah. But what we're after is how these things actually work. Right. What makes them different from your everyday model. Exactly. And why should a data science pro like you even care? Exactly. We're going to be breaking down this white paper from Google AI. Okay. And trust me, it's packed with juicy insights that go way beyond oh, nice. the usual surface level explanations. Okay. We're talking nuts and bolts. I like it. The agent's cognitive architecture, mm -hmm. its tool set, how it all gets orchestrated, yes. the whole nine yards. All right. I'm intrigued. Yeah. Let's unpack this thing. Yeah. So the white paper starts off with a pretty straightforward definition. Okay. An AI agent is basically an application that's laser focused on achieving a specific goal. Uh -huh. But what makes it special is how it does this by observing and acting upon its environment. Right. Using a bunch of tools it has at its disposal. What I find fascinating is the emphasis on autonomy and proactivity here. Yeah. We're not talking about a static model that just sits there and reacts to inputs. Right. An agent can actually plan and figure out what to do next to get closer to its objective. Okay. It's like, imagine a self-driving car navigating through traffic. Oh, I like that analogy. Yeah. The car is constantly taking in data from its surroundings. Right. Other cars, pedestrians, traffic lights. Mm-hmm and then making decisions based on that data in real time. Exactly. And then, of course, it executes those decisions, yeah. all with the goal of getting you to your destination safely and efficiently. Exactly. And that highlights a key difference between models and agents. Okay. Models are limited by the data they were trained on. Uh -huh. Their knowledge is essentially static. Okay. Agents, on the other hand, are dynamic. Right. They can tap into external information and services, mm -hmm. expanding their capabilities way beyond what a standalone model could ever do. So it's like the agent has this whole toolbox at its disposal. Yeah. Allowing it to interact with the real world. Exactly. In a much more flexible and powerful way. Yeah. It's not stuck in the training data sandbox anymore. Right. But how does it actually make sense of all this information yeah. and decide what to do? Yeah. That's where this cognitive architecture thing comes into play, right? Absolutely. Okay. The white paper breaks down the agent's brain, so to speak, mm -hmm. into three core components. All right. Think of it like how you, as a seasoned Kaggle pro, mm -hmm. might approach a really challenging coding problem. Okay, yeah. You've got your go-to mental frameworks, yeah. their favorite libraries and tools. Sure. And then there's that overall process you follow to break down the problem and arrive at a solution. Okay, I'm ready to map this to my coding brain. Okay. Hit me with those components. First up, you have the model. Okay. This is the central decision maker, the mm -hmm. heart of the agent's intelligence. It uses reasoning frameworks right. like React or Chain of Thought. Wait, React and Chain of Thought? Yeah. Those ring a bell. Yeah. Haven't we seen those techniques pop up in some of the winning Kaggle notebooks lately? Absolutely. I'm thinking of that one that used Chain of Thought prompting to solve a complex reasoning challenge. You got it. Those techniques are exactly what we're talking about here. Okay. They're all about guiding the model's thought process, mm -hmm. helping it reason, plan, yeah. and interact with its environment in a more effective way. Okay. It's like giving the model a structured way to think things through step by step. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So the model is like the strategist. Right. Figuring out the game plan based on the information it has. Exactly. But what about the actual doing, yeah. the yeah. execution of that plan? That's where the tools come in. Okay. They're like the agent's hands, okay. allowing it to reach out into the world and manipulate things. They connect the model to all sorts of external data sources and services, yeah. APIs, databases, you name it. Mm -hmm. This enables the agent to access and use information that goes way beyond its initial training set. Got it. So we've got the brain in the hands. Yeah. What's the third piece of the puzzle? What keeps everything running smoothly? You could think of it as the agent's operating system. Okay. The orchestration layer. Okay. It governs that constant cycle of how the agent takes in information, mm -hmm. reasons about it using the model, uh -huh. and then decides what to do next using the tools available. Yeah. It's the coordinator. Okay. Making sure everything runs smoothly and efficiently. So it's like a never ending loop of sensing, thinking, and acting. Exactly. All orchestrated by this layer. Right. That's pretty mind-blowing when you think about it. It is. This whole idea of an autonomous system that can adapt and yeah. learn on the fly. Yeah. It's like something straight out of science fiction. Yeah. 
But what about those tools in more detail? Right. What kind of things are we talking about here? Mm -hmm. The white paper mentioned extensions, functions, and data stores. Yeah. And I'm dying to know more about how they actually work. Let's dive into those. Okay. That's where things get really interesting, right. especially for a Kaggle audience. Mm -hmm. You're going to love how these tools can supercharge your workflows. Okay, now you've really got my attention. All right. Let's do it. All right, let's start with extensions. Imagine you're building an agent that needs to interact with a bunch of different APIs. Okay. Like Google Search, a weather service, or even a stock trading platform. Mm. You could try to hard code all of those interactions, yeah. but that would be a nightmare to maintain, right? <sighs> yeah. Talk about a maintenance headache. <laughs> I can already see myself drowning in a sea of API documentation and custom code. Exactly. There has to be a better way. That's where extensions come in. Think of them as standardized bridges between the agent and those external APIs. Okay. They handle all the messy details of communication, mm -hmm. making it super easy for your agent to tap into those external services. So if my agent needs to, say, fetch some stock prices, yeah, the extension would handle all the communication with the stock trading API. Exactly. I wouldn't have to write a bunch of custom code to parse the API responses and extract the data I need. You got The extension takes care of all that heavy lifting. Okay. It knows how to talk to the API, how to format the requests, yeah. and how to interpret the responses. Right. All you have to do is tell your agent which extension to use and what information you need. Okay. It's like having a dedicated API expert on your team. Okay, that's starting to sound pretty slick. Yeah. But how does the agent actually know how to use these extensions? Right. We're not hard coding all the possible API interactions beforehand, are we? Right. That wouldn't be very flexible. Great question. And the answer is no, we're not hard coding everything. Okay. The agent can actually learn how to use extensions on the fly. Ah. Thanks to something called open API specifications. Open API specs. Yeah. Those things. You've probably seen these before. They're basically machine-readable descriptions of how an API works. Yeah, I've definitely come across those while wrestling with some APIs. Yeah. So the agent can read these specs and figure out how to use the API all by itself. It is. And it gets even better. Oh. Each extension also comes with something called a manifest file. Think of it as a cheat sheet. Okay. That tells the agent what kind of tasks this particular extension is good at. Got it. So if your agent needs to book a flight, mm -hmm. it can quickly scan through the available extensions and pick the one that specializes in, say, interacting with travel APIs. So it's not just about knowing how to use an API. Right. It's also about knowing which API to use for a given task. Exactly. The agent can actually reason about the best tool for the job. That's some next level intelligence right there. Exactly. And that brings us to the next type of tool, functions. Okay. Now, imagine you want to do something a bit more custom, uh -huh. something that's not readily available as a pre-built extension. That's where functions come in. Okay. They're basically snippets of code that you can define mm. and then call from within your agent's workflow. So it's like giving the agent the ability to execute custom code on demand. Exactly. That opens up a whole world of possibilities. And the cool thing about functions is that they run on the client side. Okay. So let's say your agent needs to perform some complex calculation uh -huh. or process some data in a specific way. Yeah. You can define a function for that mm -hmm. and the agent will execute it locally without having to rely on an external API. Okay, so functions give you a lot of flexibility and control over the agent's behavior. Yeah. You can essentially extend its capabilities with custom code. What about data stores? Okay. What's their role in all of this? Data stores are all about getting your agent access to a wealth of information but, beyond its initial training data. Mm. Remember how we talk about agents being able to tap into external data sources? Yeah. Well, data stores are a key part of that. So instead of just having a static snapshot of the world, right. the agent can access real-time information that's constantly being updated. Precisely. Think of it like this. Imagine your agent is working on a Kaggle competition right. that involves analyzing a massive data set of text documents. Right. Now, with data stores, mm -hmm. your agent can not only access that initial data set, yeah. but also connect to, say, a vector database that contains embeddings of relevant research papers, mm -hmm. news articles, oh, wow. or even Wikipedia entries. Okay. It can dynamically pull in all sorts of additional information 
Wow. To enrich its understanding of the problem. Wow, that's powerful. It's yeah. like giving the agent access to a whole library of knowledge that's that they can use to make more informed decisions. Mm. I'm starting to see how all these pieces, right. extensions, functions, data sources mm. fit together to create this incredibly versatile and powerful system. Yeah. But there's one thing I'm still curious about. Okay. We've talked about giving the agent all these tools, right. but how do we make sure it actually knows how to use them effectively? That's a great question. Yeah. And it leads us to the fascinating world of targeted learning. Targeted learning. Sounds intriguing. Tell me more. <laughs> All right. Targeted learning. It sounds like we're about to take our agents to the next level. Yeah. Turning them into true tool masters. I'm ready to dive in. Give me the rundown. Think of targeted learning as a set of techniques that mm -hmm. help us fine tune our agents, mm -hmm. giving them that extra edge yeah. when it comes to using their tools effectively. Okay. The white paper outlines three main approaches right. in context learning, Okay. retrieval based in context learning, Okay. and fine tuning based learning. Got it. Each one has its own strengths. Uh huh. And choosing the right approach depends on the specific task you're trying to solve. Okay, those names sound a bit intimidating, like something out of a research paper. Yeah. Can you break them down for me? Let's start with in-context learning. Okay. What's the basic idea there? Imagine you're a chef learning a new dish. Okay. You've got the recipe in front of you, mm -hmm. some sample ingredients to work with, mm. and your existing culinary knowledge. Right. In context, learning is kind of like that for models. Okay. We provide them with a prompt, mm -hmm. the relevant tools, yep. and a few examples at inference time, okay. allowing them to adapt and learn in the moment. So we're not pre-training the model on a massive data set of cooking instructions beforehand. Right. We're just giving it enough information to figure things out on the fly. Exactly. Like a chef improvising in the kitchen. It's a really efficient way to equip a model for a specific task okay. without having to do extensive training beforehand. Yeah. It's all about giving the model just enough context to get the job done. Okay, I'm getting the hang of it. No. Now, what about retrieval-based in-context learning? All right. How does that differ from the regular in-context learning? Let's go back to our chef analogy. Okay. Now, imagine that our chef have access to a well-stocked pantry and a whole library of cookbooks. Okay. They can dynamically choose the best ingredients and recipes based on what they're trying to create. Why? That's what retrieval based in context learning does for models. Okay. It gives them access to external data sources mm -hmm. and allows them to pull in the most relevant information and examples on the fly. So it's like having a super powered search engine yeah. built right into the agent. Exactly. So it can search through all sorts of external knowledge right. and find exactly what it needs to solve the problem at hand. You got it. And the best part is that this external knowledge can be anything. Okay. Research papers, mm -hmm. code repositories, yeah. news articles, okay. databases, you name it. So it's like giving the agent the ability to tap into the collective wisdom of the internet. Exactly. Wow, that's pretty mind blowing. Yeah. It's like the agent is constantly expanding its knowledge base, learning oh. from everything it encounters. Yeah. Okay, so we've covered in context learning. Yeah. And retrieval based in context learning. Yeah. What about fine tuning based learning? All right. Is that more about traditional model training? Exactly. Fine tuning based learning is like sending our chef to culinary school. Okay. We train the model on a larger, more specialized data set beforehand, mm -hmm. giving it a deeper understanding of a particular domain. Okay. For example, if we know our agent will be dealing with a lot of natural language tasks. Yeah we might fine tune it on a massive data set of text and code. Got it. Or if our agent needs to be an expert in a particular scientific field, okay. we might fine tune it on a collection of research papers and data sets from that field. So it's like giving the model a head start in a specific area of expertise. Right. It's already familiar with the key concepts. Yeah. The terminology and the types of problems it's likely to encounter. Precisely. And the beauty of these targeted learning techniques is that we can combine them, okay. leveraging their strengths for different scenarios. Uh -huh. For instance, we might start with a pre-trained model. Yeah. Fine tune it on a domain specific data set mm -hmm. and then use in context learning and retrieval based in context learning to further adapt it to specific tasks. It's like we're creating these incredibly versatile and powerful AI agents yeah. that can handle all sorts of complex challenges. Exactly. 
I have to say, this is all incredibly exciting. But how does all of this translate into actual code? Right. I'm a Kaggle user. Yeah. I like to get my hands dirty and build things. Yeah. How can I start creating my own agents? That's the perfect question. And the white paper actually introduces a tool <laughs> that's becoming incredibly popular in the AI agent world, Langchain. Langchain. I've been hearing that name everywhere lately. It's everywhere. It seems like everyone in the AI space is talking about it. What's the big deal? Uh -huh. What makes it so special for building agents? Well, imagine you have all these amazing tools, yeah. your model, well, your yeah. extensions, your yeah. functions, your data stores, okay. but you need a way to orchestrate them, to connect them together into a seamless workflow. Mm -hmm. That's where Langchain comes in. Okay. It's essentially a framework that lets you chain together all these different components, yeah. creating powerful and sophisticated agent pipelines. So it's like a high-level programming language yeah. specifically designed for building agents. You could say that it provides a really intuitive and flexible way to define the agent's behavior, okay. specifying which tools to use in what order uh -huh. and how to handle the data that flows between them. Got it. And the best part is that it's open source. Oh, nice. So you can start experimenting with it right away. Okay, that sounds awesome. I'm definitely going to check out Langchain after this. Yeah. But can you give me a concrete example of how it all works? Sure. Let's say I want to build an agent that can answer complex questions. Okay that involve both information retrieval and calculation. Yeah. How would I approach that using Langchain? Let's imagine a user asks, what was the high temperature in San Francisco yesterday in Fahrenheit? What is this number raised to the 0 0.023 power? Okay, so it's a multi-step question that requires the agent to fetch some data, right. perform a calculation, yep. and then present the result. Yeah. Sounds like a perfect challenge for Langchain. Exactly. Using Langchain, you can define the agent's workflow step by step. Okay. First, it would use an extension like SERP API. SERP API, that's a cool tool. Yeah. I've used it before for web scraping. Mm -hmm. It's great for interacting with search engines programmatically. Exactly. So the agent would fetch that temperature data using SERP API, okay. extract the relevant number, mm. and then pass it on to another tool for calculation. And that's where a function would come in handy. Right, right? exactly. We can define a custom function to perform that specific calculation. You got it. The function would take the temperature as input, okay. raise it to the power of 0 0.023, uh -huh. and then return the result. So we've got the information retrieval handled by SERP API. Right. And the calculation handled by our custom function. All that's left is to present the answer to the user. And Langchain can handle that as well. Oh, wow. It provides all sorts of tools for formatting and presenting output, yeah. whether it's text, tables, or even charts and graphs. Wow, this Langchain thing is pretty powerful. It's like having a whole toolkit for building intelligent agents yeah. all in one place. I can already see how this could revolutionize the way we approach data science problems. Absolutely. Especially on Kaggle. And the beauty of it is that Langchain is constantly evolving yeah. with new tools and features being added all the time. Mm -hmm. It's a really exciting space to be in right now. This has been an amazing deep dive. It has. We've covered so much ground from the basic building blocks of AI agents to advanced techniques like targeted learning yeah. and powerful frameworks like Langchain. I have to say, I'm feeling incredibly inspired to start building some agents of my own. That's great to hear. And I think that's the perfect note to wrap up on. AI agents are not just some futuristic fantasy. They're here, they're powerful, oh. and they're accessible to anyone with a passion for data science and a bit of coding know-how. Yeah. So go out there, experiment, build cool things, mm -hmm. and who knows? Yeah. You might just create the next groundbreaking AI agent that changes the world. What problem will you solve with an AI agent? Until next time. Keep exploring, keep innovating, and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible with AI.